this case are selected holdings from the museum's LSU collection. And so a 1923 uh, football letter sweater, a 1938 boxing robe, and as you see, the LSU team was the uh, SEC champs that year. Uh, LSU Gumbos, so the annual yearbooks, serve as a wonderful resource for uh, what uh, was worn on campus for all the different periods of its history. And then a 1967 uh, freshman males, not baseball cap, but they were called beanies. Uh, the top hat in front of me is also part of that LSU collection. It belonged to uh, LSU chemistry professor, Dr. Charles Coates. He came to LSU in 1892. Uh, he came to LSU and found that there were no competitive sports for men in 1892. So he organized the first football team and uh, was its coach along with Dr. H.A. Morgan, an entomologist here. Um, the two men, had a friend in New Orleans was um, recruited to uh, put together a team uh, that represented Tulane in New Orleans. Uh, many of those were Tulane graduates. Uh, so Dr. Coates and Dr. Morgan um, nailed cleats into shoes, uh, the soles of shoes, and then chose the LSU colors, purple and gold, uh, when they shopped for some colored ribbons to uh, differentiate uh, LSU from Tulane, uh, the only uh, colors available at retail in Baton Rouge, because Mardi Gras was so close, were purple and gold. This case highlights the museum's uh, designer collection. And so Coco Chanel, classic, a wool boucle suit here from her last collection, 1971. There's several pieces from uh, Yves Saint Laurent, Paris Couture House, uh, and this uh, pantsuit particularly significant in that he introduced what he called the tuxedo suit uh, for women um, uh, in the 1960s, but he continued uh, to uh, carry that piece throughout his collections year after year. And then a very colorful printed dress from Italian designer Emilio Pucci uh, from the 1960s, 1970s. The gloves, very striking uh, ladies' elbow length gloves here are also part of that collection. They're labeled Pierre Cardin Paris. Uh, they're dated to the 1960s and that was the decade in which um, Cape Canaveral launched our first astronauts into space. Uh, it's not surprising that Pierre Cordin and other uh, designers uh, were very much influenced by space travel and Cardin so much so that he uh, designed a spacesuit for NASA in 1970. Uh, Pierre Cardin is also uh, acknowledged as being very uh, taken with geometric shapes. And so that's illustrated here in these gloves. The circle, uh, the black leather circles uh, embellishing the gloves uh, front uh, in stark contrast to the white, white background. Pierre Cardin uh, went on to be uh, a uh, designer who licensed his name, and still does, to multiple products beyond uh, those related to fashion. So from uh, everything from keychains to pen holders to cigarettes to auto interiors. Here is the museum's Baton Rouge collection. Uh, so Buckskin Bill Black's buckskins. Uh, Buckskin Black came to Baton Rouge in the 1950s and uh, had a children's program on WFB TV for a number of years. Uh, he's given credit with launching the campaign Baton Rouge Needs a Zoo and for uh, purchasing the two first two elephants at the zoo, Penny One and Penny Two. Uh, the lovely dress in the back was uh, red carpet Hollywood gown worn by Baton Rouge native Donna Douglas, who starred in the 1960s in the Bell, uh, Beverly Hillbillies as Ellie Mae Clampett. Um, and then uh, in front of me, a uh, hat dated to the 1950s, 1960s, and to Baton Rouge, important to uh, uh, 
Baton Rouge's history as well as uh, fashion history in that this was a period when a hat was a very important uh, piece in a female wardrobe. Uh, this hat is labeled uh, Sally Thal, New York Milner. Uh, the hat is important to Baton Rouge's social and editorial uh, history as well in that it belonged to Maureen Muse, a media pioneer here in our city. Uh, Maureen edited the newspaper, the State Times social section for a number of years, but perhaps she's best known for being editor of the Register magazine. Uh, the Register being the precursor of today's in Register magazine. This case uh, highlights the museum's first families of Louisiana collection. Uh, it begins in 1970 with the first term of Governor Edwin Edwards and goes through uh, our current governor, Governor John Bell Edwards and First Lady Donna Edwards. Uh, the dress here, the green, is 1996, inaugural gown of First Lady Alice Foster, and then 2008, inaugural apparel of First Lady Sapriah Jindal and her daughter. Uh, and then in front of me is a uh, man's tie uh, that's also part of that collection and is important because it has um, multiple connections to Louisiana, uh, beginning with this novelty print. So when we look at it, we see oysters on the half shell, and then here's a bottle that's labeled Tabasco pepper sauce. And we in Louisiana equate uh, Tabasco with the McElhenney family, Avery Island, the McElhenney Company, a 152-year-old business still family-owned and family-operated, uh, shipping Tabasco sauce to over 200 countries and provinces around the, uh, the globe, um, as well as bottles travel on Air Force One and on the International Space Station. Um, the company uh, has gone on to uh, add its name to other consumer products, to license, as Cardan did, uh, and that it's such a well-known uh, name. So today we find uh, the Tabasco label on uh, t-shirts, teddy bears, and ties. Uh, another Louisiana company, early Louisiana company, begun by a family, the Wembley Tie Company. Uh, started manufacturing menswear ties uh, in uh, the early 1920s and by the latter part of the 20th century had become the world's leading manufacturer of men's ties. Uh, manufacturing 35, 45,000 ties per day in its New Orleans facility. Um, that company has uh, not only use the Wembley label on its ties, but also uh, well-known uh, names like Oscar de la Renta and Tabasco. Uh, it's not uh, unexpected, too, that this would have been uh, in the closet of one of our uh, governors and that it brings recognition to Louisiana's unique um, history, its unique products, its unique industries. And uh, this was um, a donation by Governor Mike Foster, our 53rd governor. And this case is the museum's uh, Louisiana collection. So Mardi Gras, not just New Orleans, but also South Louisiana Cajun Mardi Gras represented. Uh, this man's suit carries the label Haspel. Uh, Haspel is an early uh, New Orleans uh, company that's credited with giving um, the world the first male seersucker suit. Uh, and then multiple examples in the museum of uh, family treasures that were stored in Louisiana attics and future generations uh, finding them and donating them to the museum um, to be preserved for future generations. And uh, preservation uh, is one of the uh, biggest missions of the museum. And it's certainly the case with the unique Acadian-produced, hand-spun, hand-woven textiles 
uh, in the museum's holdings. The blankets certainly make up the greatest portion of the museum's collections of Acadian textiles, uh, but there are other examples too. Uh, there are rugs in the collection, uh, there are uh, bed coverings, there's a pieced quilt, uh, as well as uh, smaller textile artifacts. This one, uh, probably a, a table scarf, uh, uh, was, its, was its purpose. All of these, though, illustrate how creative the Acadian weavers were. It's important for the museum to have in its holdings uh, non-Western uh, textile artifacts in addition to Western fashion examples. And uh, so um, there are a number of pieces that are uh, not traditional to multiple non-Western areas of the globe included in the museum's holdings. Um, so J Japanese textiles, Chinese textiles, Central American textiles, uh, all uh, a part of those collections. And here is a piece that's especially significant in that it's part of a larger donation of uh, second to ninth century late antique, early uh, Byzantine pieces. So now, uh, a museum visitor, a student, can come into the museum and see uh, a textile fragment that was woven over a thousand or two thousand years ago. In this case is a uh, most beloved piece uh, uh, in the museum's holdings, and it's this dress uh, dated 1966, um, designed by California designer James uh, Galanos. Uh, known for his extremely well-constructed garments. In fact, Paris couture designer Givenchy uh, made the comment when looking at the interior of a Galano's gown, we don't make it th them this well in Paris. Um, the museum requested a New York fashion illustrator Stephen Stippelman uh, for a rendering, a fashion rendering of the dress. Stephen Steppelman served as uh, the chief illustrator for Women's Wear Daily uh, for a number of years. And he, he uh, responded to that request with the sketch you see here. The sketch is used very often in print media to advertise, to represent the museum and its friends support group. One reason for that is um, its origin. Uh, it belonged to a long-term supporter of the museum, a major donor, Mae Baynard. Mm -hmm.